when you've got a complicated building like this to paint in watercolour, do you go tight or loose? Uh, my normal style is a loose watercolour style, uh, but I'm going to go tight on this one. This is the subject of the painting is the Jade Emperor Pagoda in Ho Chi Minh City, um, Vietnam. And this is the entrance to the pagoda. Lots of, I mean, if we actually look at the, the detail in here, we can see lots of detail. And that might phase you and be so complicated that you might just not bother painting a scene like this. But I, I think if I just try and keep it simple, yet a fairly tight painting, trying to keep, trying to be vigilant of the, um, the proportions of the pagoda. And secondly, try and make a feature of these lanterns as well. They're quite nice filling in that, that sky area and leading the eye into the entrance. We've got a few people as well. Um, I want to say thank you for um, the donation of this um, source image by Ravi, Ravi B of uh, from my Patreon site. Um, thanks very much, Ravi. And hopefully I do it justice and make a nice picture. Well, slightly getting out of my comfort zone. I haven't um, ever painted a temple or pagoda like this so slightly out of my comfort zone which you need to do with painting is take on subjects that are a little bit um different or things that you wouldn't normally do you can see this photograph was taken during covid um yeah uh so my name's i should have introduced myself my name's tim wilmot watercolor painter artist and tutor producing videos up on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to go through the complete painting process. I'm actually going to take you through a little thumbnail sketch I will do just to get the composition right. And then my normal stages of watercolour painting, going through the initial drawing, then laying down the wash, and then some darks and details. And I'll wrap it up at the end with, with a, a little short critique. Um, Try and explain where I, where I might have gone okay, where I might have gone gone not okay. Um, so the complete process for you. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Before I paint, I might do a little thumbnail sketch. Not always, but a few times, just to get the composition right and sort out the values as well. So I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go landscape with this picture and the, the center of the pagoda is going to be somewhere like that. Then we've got the two main sides. There's some ornate stuff on the top. Uh, we have the, the sign of those three Chinese words there. Uh, we've got a kind of covering over the entrance there, some tiling. Um, we've got two sort of wings to the main entrance and then we come down to street level. Um, researching on Google I think there's some more extent there, something like that. There's on the left hand side, there's a sort of profile of a, a lantern or something. So there'd be something suitable over here as a, as a sort of border on that left hand side. Be quite dark there. I think I'll keep the actual building itself quite light. So skylight building light um, and then from a composition point of view we've got over on the right hand side so this is on the left hand side this lantern maybe there's some foliage a shrub or something look like a look like a 
a rubber tree or rubber plant in the in the picture. Um, of course, a few figures as well. I'll decide on those when I do the painting. Um, now, a key thing. Well, there's two th there's two key things to this painting. There's the getting the building right and the proportion. So thinking about the distance from there to there to there, you know, that's sort of almost halfway. This is, it's not quite square, but it's, 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 it's nearly there. Um, and the proportions of the width of that compared to that. So this is a little bit narrower than that. Obviously, this is this is wider. This um, front, this main front portion. So, apart from that, it's also these lanterns, these beautiful lanterns, um, which is uh, I want to make a, a feature of it. Um, so, in the photograph, there's sort of there's a bigger one here, uh, and then almost horizontally they go off there. I think it might be quite nice to have a little bit of a emanating from the centre here. Well, we've got that main one going up there, that line going up there, the supporting wire, if you like. And then maybe if we have at a different angle, so not not symmetrical, but maybe a shallower angle, something like that. And maybe a second one as well. And the lanterns, again, I'll, I'll think about the placement and the size of these when I do the, do the painting proper, but they're, they're sort of oval in shape, um, going slightly smaller, of course, as we go into the distance towards the entrance, um, and then more here, something like that. And I think with this one, the, the photograph is quite dark, but I'm going to go quite light with the background and then making a feature of the lanterns, have them quite dark, a deeper colour against the softer background. See how that looks. I'm just cross hatching here just to give an indication of the how dark that might be, see if it works. And then we've got the, the Chinese writing there. Um, yeah, so light there, dark here, get the building proportions right, get the perspective right as well. So there's that line there, almost, well, this is the eye level, so that will be horizontal. Um, and, you know, different figures, the head starting on the top of them, starting on that line. And maybe some, a slight change in the gradient or some sort of paving here to help with the, again, with the perspective. So. You know, the eye might sort of go down to the left there. This will be dark-ish in here. So I want to get that dark, do a bit of careful painting around some of these lighter lanterns. Yes, yeah, so I'm fairly happy with that as a little thumbnail sketch, just to get, as I say, just to get it right in my own mind, the actual composition, the values, and getting the placement of the building right as well uh, before I go on to the painting stage. But I, I can do, I can obviously make some minor adjustments at the drawing stage, but just to sort of getting it right in my own mind with that little thumbnail sketch. Paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. This is 300 grams in weight or 140 pounds and it's 22 in sorry it's not 22 inches it's 15 inches across by 11 inches down so it's quarter imperial 
and it's cold press, which is the medium texture. Um, I've got it secured with masking tape. It's, it hasn't been stretched. And first thing then is for me is doing my outline drawing. Pretty much following the ideas behind my thumbnail sketch with the placement. I started off exactly the same as with the thumbnail sketch, starting off with the, the top left corner of the main part of the entrance to the pagoda and getting the proportions right and the perspective as well of the top. Actually, the, the perspective isn't too difficult with this one because we're almost sort of sideways. Uh, we're almost facing to the building. So there's not too many complicated angles to consider. So starting off with the main part of the entrance, above the entrance, then there's these two wings or side bits. Um, right above the entrance, we've got this tiled covering with a slight, I think there's a slight sort of a curve to it. Um, and because of the angle that we're looking at, we've got to think about the, the, the angles of those two side bits, the extension to the, um, to that, uh, roof. Then a left-hand side here, trying to keep them parallel to the side of the paper. So I'm looking at my masking tape as a guide and trying to get them parallel, strengthening up a few lines there, partly so I can see it and you can see it. Then there's two sides to the main entrance. There's a sign in the middle with those three Chinese words on them just marking up the centre and where those three Chinese were. Then the base of the building, street level, continue that side, that left hand side, the right hand side. Got to make sure because the two most important elements to this as I said is are the, the actual building itself and these lanterns. So I've got to spend a bit of time getting this building right. There's a horizontal uh, line to the left and the right of the entrance. And then after my Google research, I think there's, it's like a sort of step really from the cent that central part um, leading out with these, these uh, side panels either side of the entrance to the pagoda. Continue that left hand side, the right hand side down to the street level. Now to get in a few figures. I'll have a few figures with different poses, different, uh, of course, different placements. And 
I start with the head and quickly then decide with the shoulders where they're going. Um, are they walking away or walking towards me or side to side? And it's important to get these figures in because it just adds a, a little bit more interest and a sense of scale to the building and can also help from a composition point of view the balance of these figures as well. And so talking about balance I think there could be a possibility of a few more over on the left hand side. Strengthen up that top line. Just an indication of the mouldings on the top and the tiling um, on the top. There's a, an extension here, a little sort of um, plinth or, or a top to the column with some bit of work on the top. You can see I'm well versed in all these architectural terms. To strengthen up that line there, they're going to be yellow in the picture. That's that yellow box around that surrounds the three Chinese words. Uh, tiling here at the front. So I'm just marking a central point here where I'll have the three lines of lanterns coming from. So as I did as I did with my thumbnail sketch before, a couple of lines to the left and then a steeper angle to the right with some larger, larger lanterns on them. I'll start by drawing in the nearest lanterns and then receding into the distance, get a little bit smaller. And closer together. Getting a little bit larger towards us and then the last one just make these the outline of the lantern is a bit stronger as well. So I'm, I'm not absolutely sure at this stage when I do, when I paint in the pagoda, how dark it will be. I'm going to go fairly soft. I want it to be a sort of bright yet maybe overcast day and just soft shadows, but keep keep that building light, but then make the lanterns because the lanterns are more important for me in this. Well, it's, it's all important, but try to make um, 
the lantern stand out a bit more. I'm going to go soft with the background, but then stronger for the for the actual lanterns themselves. I'm using a 3B pencil as well, so it's quite soft and the lines are, are fairly dark. It's also, it's also quite a thick pencil. I find if I use a, a thinner mechanical pencil, it sometimes makes a little bit of a dent in the surface that damages the surface of the paper. Now, on the left hand side, there's just a hint of the, um, I'm not sure if it's a shrine or a lantern, but it's very oriental looking and it provides a nice border on that left hand side. A few lines in the street, just strengthen up that figure there with the legs. Perhaps get in a couple more figures on the left hand side. They'll be lighter in value, a bit further away in the distance. If you want to have a go at uh, painting projects like this, then uh, take a look at my Patreon site, patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. Think of it like a club um, for those of you not on Patreon. Um, those of you watching this, take a look. If you're not a member of a club or, and want to join a little community, a little friendly watercolour community, and uh, there's lots of activities um, going on there. A main one every month, which is a project that I set. Um, we're doing a around the world, as of this video, we're doing a around the world theme at the moment. So we're, we're going westwards around the world, selecting different locations, different um, subjects and scenes to paint like this. And the whole point is uh, you're sharing your work and you get a critique from me to help you along the way. So if you're interested, please take a look at patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot where you'll see all the information up there, or just drop me a line if you've got any queries about it. Well, we're at the painting stage now, and starting with the sky, as I normally do, a light blue wash, and the direction of my brush strokes, I want it to give just a hint of um, some clouds in the sky almost reflecting the lines of the lantern. So just drawing your eye in a little bit into the scene. And I've painted over the edge of the buildings because I do want a softish edge in the background, especially um, now behind the pagoda, there are some more modern buildings, creamish in colour. So I've just sort of given a hint of those um, there in the on the right hand side. And while everything's still wet, go in now with the colour of the pagoda, which this this will probably be it. I need to try and keep it light, not go too dark. Um, the left side, the right side, keep that kind of soft and very simple, just implying some buildings over there. And this, this red colour, it's a bit of a mixture of Windsor red and Hallows and Crimson. Let me take you through the colours on my palette for this painting. And starting from the top, it's neutral tint then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green. I'll be using that for the rooftops, the um, these the tiles in there. Uh, then cerulean blue, which I used for mainly for the sky, cobalt blue, 
Ultramarine Blue, Allison Crimson, Windsor Red, Light Red, Cadmium Orange, Lemon Yellow, and then running across the bottom, I got a, a lavender. So down to so I drag, I drag that red wash over down past the street level. Now I'm going a bit cooler with a blue for the street. Um, it probably needs to be warmed up a little bit with a touch of burnt sienna. It's a little bit too blue at the moment. And cover up all of the white paper with this wash, apart from little parts in there. So I've left a few little um, bits of the paper showing on the figures. Not intentional, purely, a, a, totally an accident, but we can make something of those. So I'm just going back up into the, the upper parts of the painting, just making sure I cover up some of the main parts to it. Now, while everything's still quite damp, I'm going to be painting in this with this cobalt green colour, the tiling in, and just implying some of the statues and I think they're dragons and things going across the, there's decoration across the tops of the building and the sides. So that's the very top there. Small brush, synthetic brush, and a little this is a little bit thicker in consistency than the the red and the sky blue. Then above the entrance I'm painting, this is the first part of me painting around the lanterns. When I paint the lanterns, I want to keep them like a bright red. So that's why I'm painting around these. I don't want to make it too dirty or too muddy with that cobalt green. This brush is a synthetic brush. It's actually quite... A cheap brush this one this is from Jack's hair and it's a size five not much of a point to it it's got actually quite a flat um, edge to it which is it's actually quite useful for doing this sort of work if I had a, a pointy brush it wouldn't um, when I'm applying the paint it wouldn't be so even I think it's just right just a slight bit of flatness to, to the brush. Where the Chinese writing is, that's a sort of greyish colour, or just a hint of that green. So I'm applying some extra paint, but almost um, at the same time, lifting off some of that red can you see with the same brush just lightly applying the brush lifting it off and i've got a sponge over to my right i'm just wiping the brush in that sponge or over the top of that sponge just to it's a damp sponge just to clean it off a bit and while i'm at it i could just lift off a tiny bit of some of the red just to Add a little bit of difference to some of the red so it's not all like a uniform flat wash it's uh it's beginning to, to we've got different um shades of red there different intensities of red on that on the front of that building which is what i'm what i'm after
the important thing at, at this stage. So I'm, I'm letting it dry now and timing is important in watercolour. And I could make a mistake if I now start adding in extra washes on top of this. So I'm going to be drying the paper with a hairdryer here. I've silenced it. This is actually a silent hairdryer, but it's not that silent. Um, so I'm making sure everything is perfectly dry before going on to the next stage, which will be the lanterns. And thankfully, I can still see those pencil lines, the outline of those lanterns. You can always tell with the uh, paper when it's dry because when I applied that first bit of wash, you can't really see it, but it does buckle a little bit, which I don't mind. Um, when you're laying down a, a flat wash, it can actually help you lump, lay down in different sort of consistency of consistencies of color. So I don't, I don't mind that. And um, as I'm drawing it, it will get a lot flatter and that hopefully the masking tape will do its job and not um, the paper won't move too much. I was debating what size or type of brush to, to use for these lanterns. Um, I had, you didn't see me, but I had picked up a, a bigger brush in this, but thought better of it and I just thought when I get down to the smaller lanterns, it's going to be a little bit too big. I'd rather use the same brush for doing all of these lanterns. So I've tried to make a bit of a compromise. It's probably, this size brush is probably ideal for the smaller lanterns. It might be a um, bit more tricky for the larger lanterns, but I'll see how I get on. And I'm just carefully, doesn't matter if I leave little bits of the paper showing through, but covering over most of this red and keeping it fairly wet and moist because I want to lift off while it's still damp I want to lift off the top part of the lantern or certainly the top left hand part of the lantern just where the light is catching it Some of these left hand ones might be just covered up a tiny bit with that, with the um, structure on the left hand side. This is really tight painting for me. I'm not really used to this. I prefer doing looser painting, but I'm just not sure painting a, a building like this and all these lanterns, how could you attempt to do that in a loose way? Um, thought about it, but I can't really work it out. So I'm adopting the uh, non-loose method here going fairly tight on these on these lanterns. Now I need to lift off a little bit of the red paint before it dries. Uh, this is the brush actually I was going to do the lanterns with. Fairly big, certainly too big for the smaller ones, but being synthetic I just think I can just eke out. Um, this Windsor Red is proving to be quite difficult to lift off. So if it doesn't come off, I might need to wet the red paint a little bit to lift it off. That one came off a little bit better. 
ideally it's got to be a stiff brush, a synthetic brush, not, not too hard that it's going to damage the surface and not too soft in that if it's too soft, it just won't lift off the paint if it's quite thick. So it's, it's almost like a sort of mechanical action in lifting off, but also sucking up some of that pigment. This is a little bit better now. Going back to that same brush I used to paint the lanterns with in the first place, that's a little bit better. Just mop it, just uh, wipe it off on my damp sponge to my right. Maybe just add in a bit more water before I go back onto those lanterns. I could have done this when the paint was dry. If, if the lanterns had dried, then I could have uh, added a little bit of clear water on the top part of the lantern and then maybe wait a minute or two for that paint to soak in and then lift off again. But I'm just preferring to do this half first of all before doing the doing the re remaining ones on the right hand side. And doing this lifting off it, it hopefully, and when I add in the shade, um, a darker bit on the lower part of the lantern, hopefully that will just make it a bit more um, uh, three dimensional, give it, give it more of a curve. So this is now the bottom bits of the lanterns, maybe a little bit too dark. I've, I've used Allerton Crimson and Ultramarine Blue, possibly a bit too much blue, but we'll see. I mean, the most important thing here is getting the right level of darkness, the right uh, tone or, or value for this. I can use the finger just to smudge and give myself a bit of a, a smooth transition from the dark to the light. Fairly, it's fairly thick paint because that red paint is still quite moist so I don't need a lot of water here if I add in too much water um, it would just make a little bit of a mess and 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 possibly end up with little tiny blooms so it, you just just need to practice and judge the water to pigment ratio And when I add the the add in the ribs of the lanterns later on, that will give it even more of a a three dimensional form, more of a, um, a more of the impression of the curve of these lanterns. Now the ones on the right hand side start with the one furthest away Don't often use a small brush so soon in the painting as I am now. Normally, normally I use this brush or a brush similar to this size right at the very end of the painting. When I'm doing, well, typically if it's a street scene, putting in windows or doorways, um, smaller details. So this is a bit unusual for me using such a small brush. I'm, I'm normally with a painting, I start off with the biggest brush first and then as each stage progresses, I'm using a slightly smaller brush. This is the main one then. This is the, well, this is the biggest one, shall I say, the biggest lantern. Try and put in a little bit of extra effort on that one. And lift off the top left as I did with the others. 
same brush. And if it doesn't come off, just have a little bit of extra water on the brush. And then just dry it a little bit. Bit more on that one. Just starting to come away now, come off a little bit more with that, this lifting off. Uh, applying a bit more pressure with the brush now. Bit of gentle scrubbing on, on this bigger one, that's been a bit more useful. There you go. That's a bit better on that one. And pick up some shadow mix. You can see how flat that brush is now. I just sort of spread the hairs out and it's uh, a little bit wider. Now these lanterns have got a little, I guess it's a little sort of um, hole at the bottom and some decoration hanging down from them in the middle. So I've just, though those that are closest to us, I've just created um, that, that little bit of that hanging piece. That's almost like a, I guess it's like a tube or a cylinder and then there's these tassels or something yellow tassels coming down they must look quite nice when you're right underneath them uh, just a few more there for the furthest ones those in the middle I'll need to paint around those uh, with the darker colour in the doorway. Um, these left hand ones now. Try not to make them too orange if I'm touching the red. There we go. So certainly a few of them are, are looking quite um, a little bit more realis realistic as lanterns now, more of a three-dimensional form. So while those lanterns are drying, I can now go back to the pagoda and start adding in some, some of the little bits of architectural details and strengthening up some of the horizontal and vertical lines. It's quite a strong line at the top here and a few little thinner lines below it. Th these lines, they can be not a continuous line, a bit of lost and found, so they're, they're not a, a continuous uh, dark line. A bit stronger there, then continuing on the same line, perhaps a little bit hidden by 
these lanterns on the right hand side so they're obviously behind the lanterns I'm using a it's a bit of a sort of 50 50 mix of ultramarine blue and Windsor red on on these right just above the tiling the roof on the entrance and over to the right hand side that right hand column this other side uh, part and stronger line there These are the tiles on the top. Nothing too precise, just a few lines there to give the impression of some tiles. And the, the dragons or animals on the top, there's some tiles there and some tiles on the right hand side as well. Just a few lines. Not, not all of them, I could miss out a few, doesn't matter. There's the tiles on the roof over the entrance. Quite, quite dry this um, mixture now, not too much water in it at all. And it's not too, not too dark, it's a little bit of a, well mostly that cobalt green tiny bit of neutral tint to darken it up. I'll need to, that edge of the roof, I'll need to make a bit darker where it just um, is covering the entrance. As I go over to the side of the painting, I don't want to get too detailed. I want the the main detail to be on the uh, pagoda there, but uh, not not to uh, just leave it up to the imagination of the viewer to decide what's um, over to the left and the right. Strengthen up the street level line. Few more lines on the street. We'll go in stronger with those later on as well. A bit more yellow now for the border around the, the Chinese letters, Chinese lettering, so that's that top left hand side, bottom and then the right. All right now to a very important part of the picture I think just to give it that real um, Chinese flavour to the pagoda, some lettering and starting with the middle one now, I've got no idea about these Chinese, this, these Chinese script, um, I'm just thinking of, the, of them as shapes. So this middle one is almost to me like a, a little bit of a hat with a face and a line across the middle, line at the bottom there and then coming down 
lower part's got three horizontal lines connected, connected down the center. And maybe a bit, bit wider on that bottom one. So I'm using the same red as the lanterns, quite bright red. And I'll add some shadow on afterwards. So this brush is quite useful because as I say it's got this flat flat end to it. Now this left hand one looks like a one and then a two to me. Below that is like an X with a bit of a, a curvy bit to the end. So one, two, strengthen up that, strengthen up that one. Then just to the left of the X is a, a vertical and a few little lines coming off to the right hand side of that. The one on the right hand side though is a lot easier. It's three lines, second one and third one connected down the middle again. There we are. Next, really, I, I need to start adding in a bit more darker values to the entrance, which will give a bit of form to the furthest lanterns. This is a medium squirrel mop brush, but really, really any medium brush will do just to apply another darker wash over the entrance, being careful to paint around the lanterns. So deciding that left hand edge of the roof there, uh, just come up at the edge of the roof underneath the, the first lantern, around the, the tassels at the bottom, then over to the next one. Carefully paint around this one. Continue the edge of the roof along, around the tassels over to the right. And now come a bit darker to cover that entrance. And the way I'm, the way I'm using this brush, it's got um, a bit of a flat edge to it, which is quite useful for applying these vertical marks here. It's almost like a fat felt tip pen, like a wide felt tip pen, just colouring in that area. It doesn't matter if there's a few little bits of the paper showing. And to cover up those if there's too many. A few windows in the background building, just a few, not too strong a value. Don't want it to show up too much.
Now to the figures, Start off, starting off on the left hand side, quite light in value, these distant figures. Um, doesn't matter too much what the colours are for the figures, but just something a little bit darker than the background. And I'll come stronger in colour for the nearer figures. And there's that light, there's that third figure in from the left, there's a bit of white showing there, could be um, maybe a bag over the shoulder, could be a, a big hoodie, I don't know. Uh, I just, um, it accidentally appeared and I, I was loath to cover it over. Perhaps this person's got a bit of a hat. The shadow, not too dark the shadow, but it's sort of one of those bright yet overcast days here. Bit of uh, um, flesh colour. And perhaps a few, a hint of a few inside the pagoda, in the um, in that in that darker entrance. With the legs, I don't want to spend too much time on painting those. They can, if I spend too much time, they can look a bit too sort of rigid and um, lack of lack of movement. So, got to be a bit careful. Sometimes, when I draw figures, the the quickest ones end up being end up being a little bit more realistic. The more time I spend on the figures, I get I get dragged into the, the detail of them and uh, particularly the legs and other shadows. Don't want to overwork those shadows too much. And then the next figure along. Just a slight different pose on this one. Shadow, tiny bit of a shadow. I can just see there's accidentally there's a figure here. I can just make a head there and the bottom part of the figure legs. I quite often find that when I when I've painted in a, a darker background or a darker area, shadows or something, figures just appear. I can see a face or shoulders, part of the part of the upper part of the body, and I can make a another figure out of them. And it's 
last figure on the right hand side. Then shadow connected to the figure, very important not to uh, have them unconnected. Add an arm to that one that's magically appeared and then left arm, right arm, strengthen up that lower part. I need to go darker in the entrance. So this brush is proven to be quite versatile in this painting. Being careful not to overwork it too much. and not too dark that it brings it too far forward, but it's got to be dark enough to go around those lanterns just to make them stand out a bit more. Later on, I will add a touch of white paint to some of these lanterns just to make them stand out a bit more um, on the uh, top part that catching the light, but this is quite important now to create this, this darkness, particularly in the top part of the entrance, maybe a little bit lighter down towards the bottom as, as that's catching a, a bit of light. Paint around that lantern, down, maybe some extra figures will appear in the, uh, in the semi-darkness. A bit more water, pick up that burnt umber, bit of altering blue, bit of neutral tint, go darker. Strengthen up the edges of the lantern and just keep going over to the right. Bit more water. Yeah, there's a fit, there's a fit just pin there with that lighter bit being the face. And then a bit more detail to these side columns. A few more stronger verticals. Um, with with this brush now, I'm just picking up a few details here and there. A bit of lost and found on those verticals. And there's a bit of a recess here. Not sure if it's another covering or another entrance. And then on the left hand side. make the um, base of the of the building a bit stronger. Got to add in these steps at the entrance. I think there's just just a few steps there. Um, and then these lines going across the scene, make those a bit stronger. Uh, 
a hat for this figure, a peak. And a stronger colour for the hat. A bit darker for that one on the head, face for that one. Tiles on that right hand roof, and then a few more lines on the left. Strengthen up that line there, and on the right hand side. As well as these videos on on uh, YouTube, and uh, also published through my Patreon site, I do from time to time. I do live online watercolor workshops. Nothing to do with YouTube or Patreon. Um, again, I choose a different subject or scene every workshop. Normally, landscapes and seascapes. Uh, keep keep uh, different subjects on each, each workshop so it's a live online watercolor workshop and uh, more details if you go to crowdcast.io slash tim wilmot so that's c-r-o-w-d-c-a-s-t dot i-o slash tim wilmot t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t you'll see the details of my up and coming workshops and you get a critique as well on a, on a joint video. Right, different brush now. A small flat brush for doing as quickly as I can in a loose way the, um, the structure on the left hand side. I'm calling it a structure now because I don't know, don't know what it is. Um, whether it's some sort of lantern or a shrine or um, this tool. It's like a tiered. Um, structure in front of the pagoda entrance on a sort of platform but I'm just with these with these shapes these brush marks just trying to hint at something there with a sort of this jagged edge, um, which I think they're, they're sort of the, ed the ends of the tiles on this structure. And then there's a base with a support on the, a curved support on the right hand side. Don't often use this brush. This is a soft aqua brush, 
and a flat one. Um, soft aqua, and this is, um, well, they've got numbers. It's a 915, that's the series, 915, and it's a size 12, which, is that 12 millimeters? Maybe. Um, so it's a Raphael Soft Aqua brush. Princeton do, Princeton in the US do a similar series called Neptune. I'm using the same brush for this, I call it a rubber tree or rubber plant on the right hand side. I could have used my squirrel mop for this because that can give quite nice leaf shapes. But I think here, if I'm a bit careful, I can use the same brush. Don't want to make it too squarish, too, too um, sharp with the corners. Try and make it as natural looking as possible. There are some leaves we can just see the side profile and then others are a bit, bit larger. And as I'm coming down the bottom, get a bit more loose. The green I'm using there is, um, well, mostly Viridian green with a bit of burnt umber is quite a good green actually good for foliage um, like the left hand side not overdo it too much I think this foreground is quite empty at the moment so I do need to it's not evident in the photograph, but I do need to add in a few lines here to give the feeling of some um, slabs or tiles on the on the foreground and, and also with these lines helping lead the viewer into the scene. Far one there and I'll make some more make some of these lines a bit stronger uh, when the, where they intersect to give them more of a sort of older feel I need to add in the ribs of the lanterns now and decision on what brush to use. Could use rigor. It's got to have a good point to it and the ability to do, do some nice strong lines. Um, and down in the bottom right corner of my palette, I've got some crusty old dried white gouache down there, bottom right corner where I'm mixing now, and I've added a bit of yellow to it. Sometimes I add a bit of blue to it to give it, um, to give uh, quite nice um, smoke colour. If we imagine a fire, that can be quite nice. A bit of, a bit of blue with that uh, white gouache. So I'm mixing yellow in here and then creating these curved lines which is just hopefully the finishing touch to making them look a bit more pretty and realistic as these Chinese lanterns. Not too, not too strong on the lower part of the lantern, mainly on the top, on the top side of them.
course, we've got to get the wires in as well afterwards. But just put the um, finishing touches to some of these. These right hand ones. Just on the top part, not over doing it. Pay a bit more attention to this one. And then Perhaps just a few of those tassels catching a bit of the light. So I need to strengthen up the entrance a little bit. I need to add in a bit of a stronger color to the figures. Um, I'm using a rigger brush here from Lebenson uh, to create the wires, these supporting wires. Quite an important part of this to get right, um, as steady as I can. Um, doesn't need to be a perfect line, could have some gaps in it, just where the light is catching the wire. And I'll, with my white paint, I'll, particularly where it, it crosses some darker areas, I'll use white paint just to show a little bit of highlight. Now up the right hand side, connecting the middle, the top of the middle of the lanterns over the edge of the, of the um, paper, mar the masking tape. Neutral tint. Uh, this figure is bugging me and I don't think it's quite right. Need to strengthen it with a jacket. I'm not sure if it was the legs went a bit wrong for me or the top of the figure, but um, that might be a small improvement. Add some at a, a darker um, lower part of that one, just a few little bits and pieces. I know that there are, in the photograph, there's signage around and plaques on the wall. Um, that for me would be a little bit too much detail this stage. I just want to be just really a, a study of the pagoda and these lanterns. So everything else is... Um, is not as important. Uh, on the pavement, we've got some shadows from the lanterns. Just a few of those. Shot, I shan't bother doing in the shadow of the wire. I think that would be too thin to show up as a shadow and then on the right hand side just thinking about where the sun's coming from probably quite high 
in the sky and just slightly to the left. Next, I'm going to add some shadow to the Chinese lettering just to give them, make them stand out a bit more. So back to my little Jack's hair brush, neutral tint, quite dark, bit of burnt umber, neutral tint, quite dry, not a lot of water, check the edge of my brush. And on the right hand side of the red just adding a bit of a, a dark line there you know, that will start to make it stand out a bit and then the right hand one bit easier this one just the underneath and the right hand side there we are. Just a few marks. Where the lanterns are connected to the wire, there's, there's, I'm not sure exactly how, maybe it's a little hook or something to the wire. Um, do that, strengthen up some of these tiles a bit more. into the entrance, slightly darker line underneath that yellow border. So just another mention of my Patreon site for those non-Patreon people. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot for more information on my Patreon site where we've got lots of exciting projects and live streams and material that's not um, on other in other areas. Right, back out with my Lebensen brush and this rigger white paint, white gouache paint right out the tube, just apply it, just a few highlights, not overdo it too much, just where some of these figures and hats are catching the light. So this rigger brush is a little bit damp, um, not too wet, and then it's just, I'm just taking the paint straight out the tube, basically. Sometimes I do squeeze a bit onto my palette, as I mentioned down in the bottom right hand corner, and uh, but the freshest will be, the, the whitest, the brightest will always, always be out of the tube, as long as it's not being dirted up with any other paint 
just a few lines there. They're going to show up against that darker background. Perhaps a bit of light hitting the left hand side of those tassels. Just a few. Uh, the lanterns are catching the light on the top. There we go. Maybe a few leaves are catching the light as well. figure is still not right. It looks as if that darkness needs to be extended a bit on that figure that was that was bugging me. So I'm just going to cover it up a bit more, um, cover over the arm. Got to be very careful not to overwork it a bit too much and then that left hand leg's too light. That's a little bit better. And the shadow. bit more in the entrance just to define maybe some of the, the figures in the darkness. Apply a line there, a bit more darkness on the, just underneath the roof. Down a bit more. Little line there on the top. So I'm just trying to pull things together now, strengthen up some areas. I think I need to add a bit more detail to some of the slabs, just get in a few um, stronger elements to the slabs, just where the intersections are. Give a, give a feeling of that older look. There we go. So 
so as I normally do, just a little bit of a critique at the end for this uh, watercolour painting of the Jade Emperor Pagoda in Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon. Um, and the focus was, the, the key elements was to bring out the, the architectural details of the pagoda. Um, and secondly, these lanterns um, connecting down to leading right into the entrance. I wanted to keep the background quite soft um, and not too dark and then keep the lanterns a little bit darker. I think I achieved that. A few figures as well. And then on the left hand side, keeping in a simple border, this uh, uh, lantern, this tiered lantern on the left hand side and then some foliage on the right hand side as figures and the the lines of street um, going going into again a few lines leading you up to the entrance of the pagoda. Uh, I think some of the figures may be a little bit overworked. Certainly that shadow there is a little bit overworked. Maybe um, wrong brush or um, multiple layers of paint as well could affect that. Um, and also perhaps some of the shadows of the lanterns could be a little bit softer. There are a little bit too hard and rushed in a couple of places but overall I'm pleased with the result. Um, had to go quite quite tight on this one not my normal uh, loose style but I think I tried to give it justice. Hope you liked it. Catch up with you on the next video.